Hi everyone, this is Yana Smakula, and today I'm sharing a card using the old new September 2014 card kit from Simon Says Stamp. Just like always, there are some fantastic products in the kit, including papers and stickers from October Afternoon Public Library Collection, wooden dots from Teresa Collins, a mini distress ink pad, Kelly Perky washi tape, and some great cardstick too. For my card, I'm mainly going to work with a stamp set, as I think it's one of the cutest one ever. You have a ton of fantastic images that work so very well together. You have these shelves. There's a very long one for a landscape card, a medium one, and two shorter shelves. You then have these awesome book, uh, this awesome book sentiment, a great assortment of books, big, small, medium, and then some filler images too, like these boxes, alarm clock, little frames, an apple, and a plant. And of course, there are some great sentiments in here too. For my card, I'm also going to use this dark chocolate cardstick from Simon Says Stamp. I have already made an A2 top holding card out of it, and I also have a piece of Nina Solarite cardstick from my stash. I actually had it taped down to my craft mat using some repositionable adhesive from Scrapbook Adhesives, as I don't like my paper to move while I'm stamping. This, ad this adhesive actually rubs off very easily with a finger or, or an eraser. Now, for my stamping, I'm going to, to go with my favorite color combo lately, the yellow, gray, and black. So here I have the Simon Says Stamp Sunshine Ink, Memento Tuxedo Black and Gray Dewdrop Ink Pads. And in case you're wondering why I chose those brands, there actually is no particular reason to it. So feel free to use whatever inks you like best. First, I'm going to stamp the main sentiment on my card. I like big books and I cannot lie in yellow. And I just love it. It's been stuck in my head ever since I first read it on the packaging. So stamping that in sunshine yellow, and I'm trying to keep my stamp a bit longer on my paper to help the ink transfer a bit better. So the idea is to create a background around the sentiment with shelves filled with books. Some shelves are going to be located closer to me, and those are going to be stamped in black, and the books are also going to be stamped in black and some in yellow too. And then those shelves that are further are going to be stamped in gray. All of my elements are going to be of the same size, but by using gray ink, I will try to create an illusion that some are located closer and then some are located further. Now, instead of black ink, you can use the Distress Gather Twigs ink from the kit, especially if you want to create some realistic looking wooden shelves and worn books. I know Distress ink is not the best for regular stamping, but in this case, it creates a fantastic and very realistic look too. So next I'm going to stamp the shelves. And sorry, my hat is going to be getting in the camera from time to time. So first I'm stamping some of the shelves in black and then some in gray. I'm actually following a little cheat sheet that I created for myself when I first got the idea for this card. But I'm doing this a bit differently. When I was first creating my cheat image, I would stamp each shelf and would fill each shelf one by one. So I'd first stamp one shelf, one shelf, excuse me, add all of the elements to that shelf and only after that would move to the next shelf. I think this is the proper way to do this, as this way you can see exactly how much room you need in between, in between your shelves. But because I didn't want this video to be forever long, I decided I'm going to stamp all of my shelves first, then all of my frames, then all of my boxes, and so on. And when I was stamping this, I tried to imagine how I would like these shelves and books placed on the wall at my home. And this is where I got the inspiration or the idea for this card. We actually don't have a single book at home, other than some very technical books for work, but really not a single book. And I, I only have my National Geographic magazines, and that's it. It's, it's just scary. You know, I got to go and get some real books for our place. <laughs> okay, so back to my card. Now, after I stamped my shelves in black and gray, I decided to add the small square frames and gray ink to the open spaces around the sentiment and in between the shelves. Think of those as little picture frames. So I then grabbed my larger box and stamped it a few times in gray and yellow. Next, I selected the large frame and also stamped it in a few spots on my card. I had it placed vertically and horizontally too. I then moved into stamping books. Some I stamped in black and then some in gray, some stamped vertically and then some stamped horizontally laying on the shelf. I also added the little plant and I love that it's two separate stamps. You can have the flower pot stamped in any color and then add the, and then add the actual plant in green or you know yellow if you like. <laughs> and basically I just kept working in this fashion until I had all of my shelf space filled with either books, boxes, frames, apples, alarm clocks, or plants. I then added a few boxes, uh, a few books at an angle, sort of like leaning on the frame and the other books as well. I think they look really cool. Now, as I was working on this card, I had another idea for cool bookends. You know, you can mask a part of an image, say like this alarm clock image. 
stamp it in one shelf end, mask and stamp another part at the other side of the shelf, and then have a very cool book end. Or you, you, know, you can use a different image for a book end. I think that's a great idea, and I'm actually going to give it a try later. So after my stamping was done, I trimmed a fourth of an inch off of this white paper as I wanted to have some of the brown showing on the side. I then rubbed off the removable adhesive, added the permanent one with a scrapbook adhesive tape runner, and adhered this white panel to my dark chocolate card base. So this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed my little video tutorial. If you're looking for a list of supplies to create this card, you can find it below in the video description or on my blog. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, drop me a comment, and maybe share it with your friends. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!